Hello and welcome back guys. Okay, so let's look at uh, pagination in this one. Okay, when there's too many uh, comments or posts, we have to paginate. So if we come to our index page here and look at uh, this number of posts here, this is all the posts that we have. So if we keep posting here, we're going to have posts, uh, maybe let's say a hundred or a thousand posts right here, which is not good because if you load, try to load a thousand posts at once, you're going to have problems. So let's try and limit the number of posts. For the sake of having multiple pages, I want us to limit um, the number of posts to, let's say three, just for testing, and then we can shift it to 10. Well, once we see that our system is actually working. So to begin with, uh, let's go to this is the index page. So of course, we're going to open the index page, right? And now the posts start right here where it says posts and the post bar. So this is where we are reading from the database and then we are getting our follow, uh, the people we are following and then we actually read from the database right there. So now to limit the number of posts you want to get, oops, to limit the number of posts you want to get uh, is very simple. You just say limit. So here it says limit 30. Oh, so there was actually a limit there. So let's try and say limit three. Let me save that and let me refresh. So you see we have one, two, three posts and that's about it. But now let's say this is our limit and we want to go to the next page. So we need to have a formula here we can be using. So now to begin with, let's change the limit to a variable. So I'm just going to create a variable called limit. So I'll put a dollar sign there and say limit instead of having a number. So then I will come up here at the very top, just as we open our PHP tags and I'm going to create that limit and say limit equal three. So limit of three, great and we can refresh to see that we haven't broken anything everything still works as predicted okay now what we need here is what we call for us to go to the next page what we call an offset so let's create a variable called offset like so so let me explain a little bit uh, the default value is zero for an offset which means there is no offset. So let me explain a little bit uh, about offsets. So for example, if you have uh, a few numbers here, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So let's say you want to get uh, the first two numbers. Uh, no problem. You just have to tell it to read from the database and just limit to two numbers, right? That's simple enough. However, what if you want to get number three and four and not one and two? So now you will tell it to limit to two numbers, right? Great. But how does it move from here to there? This is where the offset comes in. So you can tell it to offset by two numbers here. And so it's going to begin from number three and then still give you uh, a limit of two, which you have chosen. So you get these two numbers with an offset of two. So here we are getting two offset limit two. Or we can go here, limit four, but we have an offset of one, two, three, four. So four offset and then limit four. So you get these last numbers. So this is how you move from one page to another. You use the offset and then the limit as well to limit the number of content that's coming in. So how do we decide what the offset is? So we need a few things here. We need the page number, for example, first. So let's create one variable called page number. And the default page number is one, of course, because we are usually on page one when we start these things. And then we can create a very simple formula here to, to come to an offset, right? So the offset is equal to uh, the page number, like so, page number minus one, and then multiply that by the limit. Okay, so now we need some brackets here so that we tell it to evaluate this first so let me explain how this works. 
So let's imagine we are on page one, right? And we know that on page one, our offset is zero because we don't want an offset on page one. So this is going to evaluate like this page number. That's one minus one, which will give us zero. And we all know that any number multiplied by zero is zero. So on page one, we are good to go. Offset will be zero. But what about on page two, right? So on page two, what we will have is two minus one, which will return one. And then we multiply by the limit, which is three. So now we're going to have one multiplied by three, which is three. So which means now our offset is going to be three, which means it's going to omit the first three results and go to the uh, the results after that, which is pretty good. Let's try one more time on number three. So three minus one is two. So two times three, which is six and so on and so on. So we'll start at number six at that point, which is very correct. So now to use the offset is very simple. Let's copy this offset and go to our query and use it in here. So limit uh, after limit, like here, we're telling it to order by descending and then we're telling it to limit to a, only a few results. And then finally, we can tell it to offset like this and put the value of our offset. We're going to put our variable, so offset by offset. So if we go back here, you will see that uh, there will be no difference here because now we are still at number one. But if I change our page number here, let me just try to change to page two like so, you will see very different results. So let me refresh and there you go. So now you see this post here, this one and the last one here. So that's how you go to page two. So if I keep refreshing, I'll be on page two unless I specify that I'm, page, I'm on page one and ref oops i've gone to the wrong place and refresh i'll go back to page one like that so this is how you move between pages okay great so now we are supposed to read the page number from the url and we are not supposed to be supplying the page number from there so we're just going to use this as a default but then we'll come down here and say however if uh the get variable because we'll use the get variable has a value uh, called page like this. So we're going to use page. Now you can use whatever you want here for page. You can say PG like that, uh, that's still fine because sometimes you may want to have a page named page so or another thing called page. So you, you use whatever you want here for the variable. So let's just try and use page for now. I'm going to say if we'll check if this is set. So we'll say if is set page like so. Okay. So once it is set, let's let's assign page number to this same thing. So let's do that. Page number is good to get page. All right. So we first set it to one, but if one exists in the URL, Whatever that page number is, it could be page two, page three, then we assign page number to whatever that is. But you have to be careful because this is user supplied input and you can never trust user supplied input because you could be hacked that way. Okay, even though we're not using the page number itself to read from the database, which is good, but we are using it for our calculations here. So we have to make sure this is an integer. And to do that, we can simply go at the beginning here and say int like this. So this will make sure whatever value I put in there is just converted to an integer, whether it's a word or whatever it is, it will be converted to an integer of some kind. And then what we could, uh, I think that's actually it. Okay, great. So. You could test this by uh, putting an echo here to see page number. So let me just do that. Let's just say echo page number right there. So let me go up here and refresh. We're supposed to see one. So we see that page, that's page one we are on. But if I go to my, uh, I put a question mark here and say page is equal to, and say two, you will see that now I have page two and the content has changed. It's on page two as well. 
So let's try and write some gibberish there. You'll see that it only gets the number in there and ignores the letters there. But what if there are no letters there? What do we do? And you see now that we get a number zero and we cannot have a page zero as you can see here. So we can just do something uh, of a trick here. We put another if statement, right? So let's just come down here and put another if and say if uh, page number page number if page number is less than one which means it's zero then we're going to set page number to one like so so if i come back here and refresh the page whether you write that we're still getting page one which is awesome all right now if you want to be more technical you can uh change these into a one line if statement which i prefer myself so let me show you how you can do that real quick here so we can say page number is equal to so we get that result here and put it here and then we put our condition which is this one right here so i'm going to say is set i'm just going to get it from there like so so if this is set and then we put our question mark like so and then if it is set what result do we want we want that so i'll get that and put it here if this is true this will run and then let's put our full call on there if it's not true uh we're just going to put a number one <clears throat> so as you can see page number is equal to this if this is true if it is set it's going to be equal to that if not it's going to be equal to one so this line replaces both this and that oh sorry about that so these two these three or four lines can go replaced by just that one line there which is pretty cool so we can do exactly the same thing here let me just duplicate that so page number is equal to if page number this is the condition right here page number less than one we can put our condition right there so if you want you can put these conditions in a bracket so that you can see what's really going on so you don't get confused in future so you can do it like this but it'll work even without the brackets so if page number is less than one what we want this is the result we want if it's less than one make it equal to one so all we need to do is put a one there okay if it is not less than one we still just want to retain whatever is inside page number so let's put it there so if it's less than one make it one so which means we can remove this as well i kind of like these if statement they work well if you are you you just have one one line inside the if statement then you can convert it to this format so let's see that we haven't broken anything which is good if I go here and say page two, I will go to page two. So the only thing we need now is to put some buttons down here that will actually change what's inside our URL so that we can go between pages. And doing that is quite easy. So let's, while we're still here, we have this, um, this button right here, post something something there. So if we can just find that button, which is right here, post button. So let me copy that button and put it right after the for each statement because this is the part that's looping all the posts. So just after that, I will put a, let me put these guys here like so, save. So if I refresh the page, you'll see that I have this button right there. And that is great. So now we'll change it from submit to just a button. You won't see much change there, but we'll keep the ID so we can uh, use the styles. And the value here will be different. So we'll say next page, like so. And then I'm simply just going to duplicate this and make one with previous page, like so. And let's put some styles here because I know these will overlap. So they are right next to each other. So what I want is to put some styles to make them unique. So I'm just going to say float uh, left, for example, 
and the other one will float right of course so which one is left this one is right so let's just say float right like this refresh and there we go on there. previous page next page and we'll need to give them a bigger width so let's say width is 150 pixels that's up to you to decide those things so next page previous page and then let me just put a cursor of pointer actually this cursor pointer should go up there let me cut these because even this one requires at least a pointer there to show that it's really a button. So let's come up here, post a button, paste there, save, and let's run this. So there we go. We have a nice and uh, so previous page, next page. So of course, if we click on these, nothing happens for now. So we have to give them links so that they can take us to the page that we actually want, right? So we need to be able to reconstruct this and create our own URL with a different page number. So everything else should remain the same except for the page number. Okay, so we're going to do that in the next video.